Hello everyone and welcome back to the Cyclocross Social Podcast. Today I'm joined by Tom and Twan. Hello. Hello guys. Today we will be taking a look ahead at the Super Prestige in Merch Plus of this weekend, but first we'll have a brief chat about the news of the week. And that was an article released by Sporza where they talked with Twan Herreigers, Paul, Twan Herreigers, Paul Herreigers about the situation of the Belgian cyclocross woman. To give a short summary of the article, they weren't happy about the performances that especially Sanne Kant and Laura Verdonschot had gotten so far this season. Um, Herreigers was pretty critical about Verdonschot. Um, he said he doesn't think that she can make the step up um, to be able to compete for the victory. Sanne Kant, he basically says her career is kind of over. He doesn't, has an, he doesn't have an explanation for her poor performance. Um, also, the young talent Julie de Wilde doesn't escape the critics. Um, Herr Eiger says about Verdonschot that, um, quote, you have the young Julie de Wilde, but I don't see her future very bright. And then he compares her to um, other talented girls, as he says, Jolien Verschuren and Kim van der Steenen. But both of them needed to stop because of health reasons, unquote. So he wasn't happy. And the only solution that he really gave was um, trying to change the nationality of Blanca Vos to Belgian but um, he thinks they just need to settle in and it wasn't uh, he wasn't happy to say the least and it caused quite some um, drama on um, on Twitter where Alicia Frank uh, yeah he, she reacted very um, clinical by saying that this uh, critics made her legs feel better and Sonne Kant replied with some uh, elephants on the underneath that and there were some more reactions I mean Personally, I think this wasn't the smartest article. I mean, some things in this article, they don't make sense to me. But what do you guys think? It's it's yet another article by Sporza, which just cries out for more, some sort of more development in on the women's side of things here, which I think is good. But the, the way they have gone about it is just completely wrong. Um, they They are criticizing... Uh, basically every single Belgian uh, cyclocross rider, and like the, I think even like the most offensive parts are uh, the people that aren't even named in this article, like uh, Alicia Funk indeed, uh, who like they they aren't great, but that's you, you can't expect to have generation after generation that is just great. Uh, of course, they have it with the men's, but clearly something is lacking in that youth development. Indeed, and I think it's you can't be blaming the riders for not being good enough. It's not like they're trying, you know. So the riders will be giving it their all, and if there's more up and come up and coming talent, then they have to deal with it and look further to development programs. And perhaps those should be the people who are being called out the coaches and the structure of Belgium cycling rather than the riders themselves. That's something Brooke Watts, the organizer of Fayetteville 2021 or no 2022, also said. I had a short chat with him on WhatsApp. He said the Belgian Federation should hire a woman as cross coach, maybe an ex-racer to give credibility and then start a five or six year plan to get a rainbow jersey by um, starting low like in the juniors, newcomers, try and get some talent, get girls on the bike. And he said... Maybe they should hire Daphne van, Daphne van der Brand or uh, Sanne van Pasen because, um, yeah, he thinks that those could be an asset and that it could improve the way um, talents develop because they, of course, have their experience. What do you guys think? I think it would be good for the nation as a whole if they want to see the long-term development. They really need to get a good program in place. We've seen back where I grew up in the UK, they've had a program in place now for five or six years and we've seen the benefits obviously we've got some great talent coming through Tom Pidcock and uh, and the younger generation as well juniors there's been and in the women's as well we've got Anna Kay the likes of so there's plenty of British talent now whereas five or six years ago you would have had no British women other than Nikki Brammer and Helen Wyman really in the races and Ian Field in the men. So we've gone from having three riders even starting the races to now 10 or 20 riders riding these races and competing for the podiums as well. Yeah, uh, I, I think it's always a great thing to have these uh, ex-pros 
uh, in coaching programs as well. Uh, I, I think they should definitely try and get uh, Sonic on to do them when she has retired uh, and she hopefully moves in there uh, because you really need to have that youth development. As as Tom said, it, it the the UK is doing a pretty good job of it and there's definitely coming uh, some really nice talents coming out of there. So a country like Belgium... As, especially Belgium, shouldn't have any struggles if there is just a good structure in place. I agree, and I do think that Belgium, I mean, it should be coming from the Belgian Federation, but you said Kant, I don't know if Kant wants or likes to do those kind of things. I personally haven't really seen her doing it or see her being used, because of course that's a thing as well. But I have seen um, Sven Nijs at 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 his academy, organizing uh, women cycling camps for young girls where they ride with Lars van der Haar, Toon Aert, but also uh, Ellen van Looy and Shirin van Androoy. And I do think that that's valuable and in that way there will be talent coming through. But of course, Sven Nijs can't do it on his own. He isn't even the federation. And I saw some numbers earlier. I th- it, those were pretty shocking numbers. Like in total, there were only... 200 girls under 16 or something who had a cycling license that's that's shocking in the netherlands we we have at least the double i think we even are around five or six hundred my younger sister she races cyclocross as well and then at her national championships there's 25 cyclocross riders at the start and on the on the road even more around 40 sometimes even peak 50 in uh, other age categories so I think Belgium really needs to do something because clearly it's a popular sport, but they aren't reaching the younger generation. Indeed. And I think it's important to mention, though, in the last few months, the Star Casino team have uh, had a campaign searching for new Brit- new Belgian talent. Sorry, And apparently it's attracted over 3,000 applicants of uh, young girls. So we will see how, if anything, pays off with this new initiative it's been very well publicized so whether they'll be able to bring some new talent time will tell well let's get over to the main topic of this podcast then the super prestige in uh, the Merksplatz. it will be the first time that this race will be held but actually first i would like to give you the top three of the toy to toy club in rimarov which was held this um, tuesday Boros won the men's race in front of Jakub Riemann and Simon Vanicek. And in the women's race, it was Kata Blanca Vaz who dominated by winning. She, but not only winning, she had 1 minute 21 advantage over Suzanne Verhoeven. And third place went to Anne Morchiron, who finished 2 minutes and 10 seconds down. With that said, we can now really focus on the super prestige in the Merksplatz. Um, last year this race was cancelled so or actually last year at the beginning of this year it was cancelled because of uh, wind and storm so um, it will be the first time that we are racing there it's the replacement of the super prestige and hoogstraten are the parkours is anything alike um so the parkour is relatively similar in terms of quite a bit of grassy fields but Merck's plus features some longer straight sections where we'll really see the riders get the power down We've also got the barriers, some stairs, as well as the typical bridges, which you would have also seen in Hoogstraten. So I think we could say both courses look relatively similar, but perhaps the layout is slightly different with Merck's Plus in more of an L shape and uh, with longer straights, whereas Hoogstraten was more based around a central area. It definitely looks to be a fast park course. On the Instagram stories of uh, Senna and Mirik I already saw some uh, shots from the parkours. In, in the bottom part of the L, it looks to have some uh, narrow, nasty off-camber sections. And the grass itself looks to be, um, if it rains, it looks, to be, um, it looks to be very easy to get very muddy, very fast. I don't know if there's any rain forecasted, but if it is, it's going to be super muddy. If it isn't, it's going to be super fast. Yes, well, the forecast is looking like there's a chance of showers. Wind speed of around 25k an hour, so there should be little chance of cancellation this year, thankfully. But in the coming days, we're expecting a few showers here in Belgium. And there's a 30 to 40% chance of rain on Sunday, so we'll have to see. It could be a muddy one. 
well fingers crossed because I would personally like that but um, well for the for the men's race let's first take a look at the standings in the super prestige Eli Isabit leads Tone Art by one point and Lauren Zweig by four points the rest that follows is Van der Haar and Van Kessel but they already look to be out being um, being um, four five six seven points and uh, 13 points behind respectively so um, they are ready to be out it's three guys left Isabit, Art, Zweig the three main guys of the season if this is a dry course who do you think has the upper hand? If it stays as dry, I, I think Sveik could definitely do a job here, um, especially after what he has shown over the last week. Um, Don Arts, of course, uh, looking quite good as well. Uh, might be battling against the free of uh, Paul Sousa there. I think this could be one for Arts as well. There's some long straight sections and a few short power climbs on these banks. So I think he could be looking to build on last weekend's second place when he really looked the strongest rider. And I'm sure he'll be aiming to take the win this weekend. And definitely if it's muddy, I think Arts uh, has the upper hand because we saw in Neil in the mud that he was super strong. So if this is muddy, I do think it has the potential to be a uh, loss of walking. And especially in the walking section in Neil, Arts look to be uh, way better than the rest. Closing gaps of three seconds on Swake, leaving easier beat behind. So if it's muddy, I think Arts has the upper hand. But if it's dry, I think uh, Swake has the upper hand because then... It's really the team game that comes into play, and you could see um, Easy Beach, Zweig, Van, um, Van Tournout, and maybe even Kamp at the front. And then Arts is really outnumbered. Even if Lars van der Haar is there, he'll be outnumbered big time. But it could also make for a strange race, because if it's dry, they might focus on um, the, the big battle between Telenet and, um, and uh, Paul Sauze. But then somebody like Dan Soete or Quinton Hermans could potentially take a take a jump ahead and they will both be looking at each other but for me I think um, I think Arts is the guy because he can do it on both but if it's muddy do you guys think uh, Arts as well or do you might see somebody else well, for me I would say I think this could be Arts's weekend uh, if it if it's muddy then uh, I'm definitely going for Arts uh, he seems to be the strongest he was I think last week as well uh, basically leading the entire race and uh, if it's muddy it, it's more of a mano a mano cross so that should favor him any other outsiders potentially that you could see um, make a challenge for the win or at least the podium I think that is hard to see with the Paul Sousa team there um, maybe that Van der Haar gets counted under the outsiders and he could take a shot at the podium but I, I think we have to search for the winner between uh, Sveik, Iserbeet and Art. Indeed, I'm in agreement there. I think it will be a three-man battle again. And uh, I reckon that will be the podium with those three riders. But the order is hard to tell. And in terms of that, it's been a quite old season. Because in the first part, we had uh, Tone Art dominating. Then there came a period of Iserbeet dominating. And now... It looks to be Sveik dominating, or at least dominating. They don't dominate the races, but in terms of in terms of results, you had a swing of Arch results, a swing of Visa Beat results, and now a swing of Sveik results. So maybe uh, Van Tournout is next. Yeah, I guess you could you could say that. And uh, Van Tournout's often done well in the past on some of these stranger courses with the the longer straights and maybe off camber sections. So perhaps he could be an outsider for this weekend. I think he's definitely uh, one that has to be considered one of the outsiders. Uh, I, I don't think someone like Van Turenout can go on a winning run. I don't think he quite has the quality that is required. Um, and we'll probably see uh, one of the three guys win and then uh, Van Aert and Van der Poel will return. and We'll see how it goes then. And Pitcock as well, but that's uh, for next weekend, so we won't be uh, discussing that just as of now, because it's going to be next weekend that we can see Tom Pitcock and Wout van Aert back in the field, which is definitely something that we should be looking forward to. Something else that we should be looking forward to is the women's race, the women's race, um, which is going to 
by the looks of it, be a thriller as well, just like every week in the rankings. We see Celine Del Carmen Alvarado leading with 44 out of 45 points. Only lost one point with a second place in um, that was in Neil. Lucinda Brandt the second, three points down after two second places and a win. Then we have Anna-Marie Vorsten third, five points behind, two second places and one fifth place. They look to be the ones in contention for the victory, especially considering Yara Kastelein, her relatively poor performance last week in Leuven and this course being pretty similar. She is eight points down. Denise Betsema already looks to be too far uh, down because of her um, crash in Rudervoorde. But uh, the women's race, always an open one. Who is your guys' favourite this weekend? Because to me, it looks to be anybody's race. Certainly. I think it could be any one of those five Dutch riders we've had up there this season. It's always hard to say who's going to come out on top. But I wouldn't. I, I really would expect to see perhaps another sprint finish this weekend. Like previous weekends, it's going to be an exciting race for sure. And definitely one to tune into. I think the late sand section will favor Alvarado. We have seen over the past few weeks that Brandt and Worst aren't too amazing on those. And I think uh, Denise Betsma could very well be a uh, good challenger on this course. Um, so I, I think it's going to be between Betsma and Alvarado here. It could well be, especially... I would add Brandt to that, actually, with those long straights. Worst doesn't look to be the type of rider that really loves these flat fast races as we saw in Leuven but I do think uh, Betsema is definitely a shout but I don't know maybe uh, Clausel can uh, surprise again the start list aren't official just as of now so we aren't entirely sure if she's starting but I assume she is because she looks to be in Belgium for the time so I would assume she's starting maybe she can get in the mix indeed I think it was great to see someone uh, someone else uh, up in the front in the first few laps last weekend. Maybe it came as a bit of a shock to the Dutch riders, or perhaps they kind of let her go, thinking she wouldn't be a threat. But I think she proved it with a really solid performance last weekend. But she's not to be counted out. And if she can get a good start again and then hold the wheels, she could be in for a top five, I think. Yeah, I, th- I think that is definitely what Clozel should be aiming for now. Uh, over the coming weeks, just getting those uh, a nice like uh, four fifth places, and maybe one week uh, some of the Dutch women just have a complete off week, and uh, she can get in there for a podium and maybe even a win. Well, it kind of reminded me of what Francie Moret did at the World Cup in uh, World Cup World Championships in Louisville, Kentucky, way back in 2013. Kind of similar ride, right? good start. Commentator just thinking that he could win. And then falling back a bit, but still getting a good result. And she came from mountain biking, so I don't think this Parker will suit her. But I didn't think Leuven would suit her either, considering she has a mountain biking background. They would more think about races where Lechner, that's good as well. But definitely, I think it's a name to keep an eye on. Some other outsiders that are, of course, there is Annick van Alphe, Manon Bakker. Maybe a bit less Shirin van Andro, who hasn't had the greatest season so far. Um, Catablanca Vaz isn't there neither is Inge van der Heide Puk Pietersen, Fem van Empel or some outsiders which could perhaps it, on a great day and if the, the real top riders have a bit of a less day then they could be in the mix for a podium that's the thing I love about the women's races this year it's really open and the sub top is really close to the top as well it certainly is we've had some great racing this year I'm sure this is going to be another one yeah, it will be very interesting. Uh, I think the gap from the sub-top to the top is quite big. Uh, uh, Inge van der Heide, as you just mentioned, seemingly haven't broken her foot or something, or at least there is a uh, feet injury there. Uh, very unfortunate for her. Could explain some of the lesser performances over the weeks. Um, yeah, it will be very interesting to see. Indeed, and then uh, let's make some predictions. Who do you guys think will win the men's race? I would like to go with the man in the winning mood currently, and that is Lauren Zweig. Yeah, well, three in a row, it could be for Zweig, but I will go with Arts this weekend. I think he's going to get his revenge after second place last week. He'll be eager to get back on top. Then uh, 
I'll go with uh, the obvious name that remains, Eli Iserbeet. Although I do think Van Toornout has a shot, I'll go with Iserbeet then. I think uh, he looks to be the main guy in that team and will take the win. But um, for the women's race, I'm going to go first here and I'm going to pick... Uh, I'm going to pick Alvarado. Anyway, it looks that Tom is experiencing some internet troubles as he just fell out of this call. But um, I picked Alvarado. Tuan, who do you think? Well, I, I said it would probably be between uh, Alvarado and Betsma. So uh, then I'll, I will be going with Denise Betsma for the win. So um, I'll uh, send uh, Tom a message uh, who he thinks uh, will win. And... Um, Hopefully we can still get that in in the remainder of this episode. Twan, do you have anything else that you would uh, th- would like to say about the upcoming race? I'm very excited to to see this course. Of course, uh, last year we missed out on it. Um, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm just hopefully it rains a little. It's almost uh, it's always more fun when it's uh, a bit muddy, and uh, well, it will be interesting to see. Um, yeah, I think the race organizers have been very unfortunate, actually. Last year getting cancelled due to a storm, and this year not being allowed to uh, organize with spectators there. So it's really nice uh, to see that they are actually continuing this race as well. I don't think they had much choice either, because uh, without the revenue of uh, this race, they probably already had some costs in. I think uh, cancelling once is okay, but cancelling twice? poof. I think uh, it would be a, a real hard hit. But indeed, I also hope for some rain because uh, rain would make this fun. I do think that this has the potential to turn into a course like Kruibeke. And I can see that Tom is uh, ready to rejoin the call. But the, it does have the potential to become a race like uh, Kruibeke. And now Tom is back. So, uh, Tom, I picked uh, Alvarado as potential winner for the women's race. Twan took... Um, Betsema, and uh, you are left to pick. Who do you think will win? Well, uh, for me, then, I will go with Lucien de Brand. Okay, so that stands then. We have Alvarado, Betsema, and Brand. So, um, fingers crossed that Vorst doesn't win, because then uh, we're all wrong again. But... um, can only hope for that if you're wondering where you can watch this race make sure to check cyclocrosssocial.com slash live and you will be able to find um, it there or check their instagram page as well i would like to thank tom and Twan for joining me today thank you thank you for having me on hopefully these jets that have been flying over my house for the past two hours haven't uh, annoyed you too much because uh, if they haven't then uh, make sure to leave a rating on this podcast and share it with your cyclocross friends and i will see you guys this weekend when we discuss the super prestige in the Max plus goodbye <laughs>